Um, I've been in the National Guard for May 1st will be 22 years, all in the Army National Guard. I spent the first 10 years in North Dakota and the last 12 here in Nebraska. So good thing we deal well with chaos because it's, it's just a little chaotic around here right now. Last week, um, Thursday, or maybe it was even Wednesday, my days are kind of running into each other. Um, I got home and the, the horses were in the back pasture belly deep in water. So we got them to higher ground. Our back creek had flooded due to the ice jams that were going across the state. And, and there's a, you know, a, a decent sized creek in our backyard. And so that had flooded all the way up to our white shop. Very uncommon. That's not a, you know, we usually get a little bit of water, but never up to the shop. So we moved them to higher ground, made a makeshift pen out front and, and put some hay out there for them. And it wasn't convenient, but I thought the flooding at that point was over. Saturday morning, I went to a yellow ribbon event. And after that was over, I picked up my youngest son and headed to my two oldest track meet in Crete. And by the time we got home around six or seven at night, I was, I was pretty tired. The kids got home, I said, let's cook some supper. And I looked out the front door and about a mile to the east, there was sirens and uh, lights from ambulance, fire truck, cops, everything. It was a little trippy. So I called my neighbor to the north of us and I said, what's going on? And she said, they're evacuating all the lakes here in Ashland. I said, do we have to evacuate? And she said, no, I think we'll be okay. I talked to the fire chief. He said, there's a secondary levee, um, which is the railroad tracks about six feet high. She didn't think that uh, the water would get past that secondary levee. And I talked to my friend Kim who lives about four miles up the road and I heard the fear in her voice and something inside me said just get the kids and go. So really calmly and nonchalant I packed up a bag for each kid and the dogs and stuck them in the SUV and we we left and I said worst case scenario we'll just have a night in a hotel and kids can swim and not a big deal. Um, little did I know hotels wouldn't take two dogs so we were homeless for a night and a really awesome couple or a really awesome lady in Elkhorn let us stay at her house. Total stranger opened her house to myself, my kids, my husband and the dogs. The horses were still locked up in the round pen out front and at 8 o'clock in the morning when we were all getting up and ready I talked to that same neighbor to the north, Diane, and she was in tears and she said, the water's to the house, I should have left, why didn't I leave with you? Um, that really scared me for not so much the house and the things but the horses being trapped in that round pen. They had no way to get out. They were just sitting ducks in this ice water that was coming in. So through Diane and another friend and the fire chief, the airboats that were rescuing her and our neighbors to the south also stopped to let the horses out. The horses just ran up the highway to get to high ground and I had a, an amazing neighbor pull down a trailer and he picked them up. And once I knew that they were okay, the dogs were okay, the kids, you know, all the important things that have heartbeats were okay. Um, I wasn't quite as worried about this stuff. And we didn't get into the house until I think Monday morning. Um, and that's when it kind of hit me, you know, there's a lot of stuff and, <laughs> you know, it's, it's stuff and then my verbiage throughout the day started changing and it went from stuff to trash. And it was weird how that happened, um, but that's kind of how we ended up to the cleanup phase. Coming from North Dakota, floods are a commonality with the, with the Missouri River, and I was a, an engineer. I was a bridge builder. So we did water rescue, boat rescue. Um, we bridged people when you know bridges would go out, we would build you know, indefinite structures so they could cross. So yeah, I have done it. Um, I've never been on this side of the receiving help before. It's not been easy being the person um, that had to ask for help. I think it was Sunday when Wade and I dropped off the dogs uh, outside of Wahoo with some friends of ours, another guard member that took them in. And we just looked at each other and we we said for a lot of years we've been okay and at this point in time we're not okay and this is much bigger than us so we need to 
be thankful and invite and encourage the help that we are receiving. It's been really challenging because people want to do things themselves. They, I'm fiercely independent and so when people say what can I do to help, um, I, at certain times of day it's different so whatever it is that they can provide I say yes thank you for the help it's been amazing. I hope you guys don't get muddy. So this is their little <laughs> entrapment. It was chest high to the horses. A mile and a half that way was going to make it that high here. Just blows my mind. It's all right. It's all right. We were the chosen ones. Had to be somebody, right? <laughs> We've always been the sort of people to help rather than be helped. So yeah, it's a it's a different it's a different aspect to look at it for sure. We're not we're not used to this at all. So the, the outreach has been awesome though. Everybody's been really helpful and in communication and just checking up and it's it's been really overwhelming. Whether it's you know past or present friends, coworkers, you know people from North Dakota reaching out in any way they can or uh, my co-workers, her co-workers, whatever it is. Not just the guard family, but everybody. So yeah, yeah. it's been great. Our community has very much rallied around us and supported us. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are, are kind of oblivious if they're not directly affected. I mean, now, after, over the past few days, more people see it, but at first we're kind of oblivious to the severity of everything. So um, it, it hits. It hits hard, it hits quick too. Within an hour, this place is underwater, so. Yeah. No, this is going to be a very long rebuild process. Um, we got a lot of work done yesterday, but the day that we, the first day we could get in here, it was raining, and there's not a lot you can do in the rain when you're trying to dry things out. Um, and now we're going to be working really hard today, really fast, to get a lot of this stuff out of here before it rains again. You know, don't want sheetrock saturated a second time and try to lift that. Um, but as you can see from our road, it's hard to get people even in and out of here at this point. So there's lots of challenges with floods as we're learning. <laughs> so we stayed at a cabin at Camp Mahoney. Um, luckily have that kind of in our backyard. Um, they did a 30% discount for displaced flood victims, so that was nice. Um, tonight we're going to stay with a different set of friends and tomorrow yet a different set of friends. <laughs> so we're just kind of bouncing around like, like uh, nomads. Um, it's not the easiest when you have four kids, um, but I'm really trying to keep the family together. I know there's been offers to take, you know, we'll take this kid and we'll take that kid and, and there has to still be some normalcy with us. Um, even though the kids haven't been out here to see the severity of what we're dealing with, which is good it's it's great that their school is open and they can have that normalcy um but i really like to you know at least at nighttime be together and just make sure everybody's doing okay bedrooms and food oh man we've gotten some really amazing food and cookies and there's a lady washing my laundry which is really weird but you know i'm like here's all the laundry <laughs> there's six of us <laughs> um yeah, just a really great community. We couldn't have been blessed with a better one during this. What it felt like. Shannon, you're going to make me cry, girl. Don't do it. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like you didn't let them go. Already. No, so no. How did it feel when you knew somebody was letting go of your horses? You didn't know where they were at. So I kind of let that play out on social media because not only was that our first go-to to help find help, um, I it was pretty raw. And... Um, yeah, I had to leave the driveway with the kids in tow and the dogs. Um, I left the cats. Man, those cats are resourceful. So I knew they would. <laughs> the cats ended up taking out the boat, which they're pretty smart. Um, but I, I locked those horses up and I had to, I, I couldn't take them at nine o'clock at night. And the horse trailer had taken on water the first uh, little flood surge. So I couldn't get the horse trailer out. Um, I prayed, I prayed really hard, and I worried, and I didn't sleep. Um, when 8 o'clock rolled around and I knew they were standing in ice water, um, we made 
a couple frantic phone calls to people in this area that I knew could at least try to get to them. Um, I didn't care if they just let them out and run. I know horses are resourceful. They'll run to high ground. And I said I left their halters on so I could identify them. Um, I'll find them if they're gone. But I, they're, they're sitting ducks in this round pen. They can't get out. And I'm not even sure. One of our friends is a first responder in the area. So she had kind of a hookup to the fire chief and everybody else. And the communication between her and Kelly was pretty regular. And as the neighbors were being rescued by airboat on Sunday morning, we then got a hold of Kim and the neighbors to say, just somebody on the airboat just open up the pen and let them out. Well, by that time, the first responders had been aware that they were in there through, through Kim. And... Um, I don't know, within a half hour, 40 minutes, somebody had opened it up and they ran north, found some dry pavement, and they went right to one of the responders on the highway. And not far from there, they had a trailer backed up and they loaded fine. And one of our friends north of town has them for the next week. And then we have to find an alternate home for them, but couldn't be more thankful for them either. You know, they were right on the spot, right when we needed them. So I was, sit was good. I was sitting in Gretna and my friend Kim, the, the first responder, her CB is going off and she's letting me listen to their rescue through the CB. And um, it, was, uh, it was pretty awesome because a lot of people had to work together. And I heard him say, yeah, we see them, they're coming down the road. And then I heard, does she have a donkey? And I was like, that's not my horses. I don't have a donkey. <laughs> And he's like, oh, it's a pony. And I was like, those are my horses. So the emotion that was, it was a roller coaster. I was, I was happy, I was sad, I was happy, I was sad. Um, I cried. I fell into his arms once I knew they were safe and I just cried and I said, you know what? Everybody got out. Mm -hmm. I know we'll find the cats. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, everything else is, is stuff. Yep. We keep telling ourselves that. It, it is hard, but yeah, it's tough. I think it's God's way of saying, get rid of some of this crap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>